YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles. And today, I have a topic I want to discuss. And it's a topic that I think is very important to the reptile hobby. Now, of course, before we can discuss anything, we got to show off the snake, right? So here, just for your viewing pleasure, maybe. What is your deal? Oh my goodness. Woo! Is uh, kind of fired up, super lesser. Bell, all white snake. Although that does play a role in what we're going to talk about today. And what we're going to talk about today is inclusion in the reptile hobby. And what does an all white snake have to do with inclusion in the reptile hobby? Well, I'd, if I had an all black snake, I'd pull that out too. And the point I want to make is that just like, you know, snakes look different, people look different. And we have to make sure as reptile hobbyists to include everyone. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, I think that there is a stereotype for what a reptile person is or what a reptile person looks like or what a reptile person is supposed to be. And uh, if we fall into that and we let ourselves contribute to that, then we're doing our hobby a disservice, right? So as a hobbyist, and what I mean by a hobbyist is not just a keeper. Like if you just have a few pets or something like that, then that's not something that's going to ever affect you, right? But if you're a person who wants to breed, produce, and sell some of those snakes, whether on a business level or just a level to cover, you know, your own cost, there's some things I think you have to really think about when it comes to this hobby and inclusion. And what I mean by that is if you only think of one demographic as your customer base, you're cutting off so many more people. And if we limit ourselves to that and we focus on, you know, this demographic that we think is who's going to buy a snake, you're going to miss new customers. And there is a stereotype, probably for a reason. I mean, if you go back in the hobby so far and so long, you'll probably see that whatever the stereotype is in your mind, it's in your mind there for a purpose. You know, maybe it was always a weird kid in school that had reptiles, right? Or, um, you know, maybe you expect the, the guy with the long goatee and tons of tattoos everywhere. Maybe that's the guy you expect to have reptiles. And there's probably a reason why you have that picture in your brain. You know, and there's probably a reason why you don't suspect that other people do. But let me tell you, one of my best sales I ever had was to a person that surprised me when they purchased. Uh, because they didn't fit in my head who I thought my customers would be. And it really kind of woke me up that you don't know who your customers are. And that was because she was a female one, which, you know, you always think of a snake guy. You don't think of a snake girl, but you get into this now, I think that's changing because there's so many girls we see into the hobby. And that's, that's really great. The more people we bring in, the more people who are involved, then the more our hobby is going to grow, you know, and there's tons. There's Joseph's Jungle has a channel. There's, uh, you know, oh man, there's one I just lost it something i can see the emblem green snake curls around has words in it terrible with names huge channel a snake discovery there it is does a great job of course tarantula girl you know those are the three right off the top of my head channels i can think of that focus on reptiles that are ran by women and women collections so it's not just guys and i had this um uh, I don't know how old she was, but she was very well put together uh very well dressed very professional looking you know like you'd think was probably a lawyer or a doctor or something of that nature. Uh, you know, woman, probably, you know, middle-aged. When I say middle-aged, I classify myself as middle-aged, so don't get offended. <laughs> you know, who, who came up and looked at some animals and asked a few questions and walked around a bit and came back and bought one of the most expensive animals I ever sold. Did I expect that? No. And had I blown her off, you know... I wouldn't have made that sale. Had I not treated her like a customer, I wouldn't have made that sale. And so even though I wasn't expecting it, it caught me off guard. I learned a lesson. You know, I still treated her like a customer. I guess that's the main thing I want to bring to you. Because when those people come into the hobby, you know, and, and I would imagine, and I'd love some of our female viewers especially, or some of our viewers that aren't the traditional snake people, you know, could, could weigh in on this. Uh, and, and talk about some of their experiences because I think it would be fascinating. To, to hear, you know, uh, how they feel about Because I'm sure at some point they probably felt like they got kind of blown off, you know, because they weren't that traditional person. And by, if I would have blown that person off, I would have never made that sale. And when we blow those people off, you know, some of them are just kind of curious and they get blown off. Well, then they never come back. 
And if they never come back, then our hobby loses that person that we could have brought in. And growing and bringing in people in the hobby does a few things. One, it grows your business. Two, it grows our hobby. Three, it makes us healthier long term as a hobby. I mean, do I want a hobby that is, you know, exclusive to, you know, like weird kids with tattoos in school? Or do I want a hobby that's inclusive of everybody, whether they're white, whether they're black, whether they're Hispanic, whether they're male, whether they're female, you know, whether they're straight, whether they're gay. Why do I care what they are if they're in our hobby? It has nothing to do with it. I want them in our hobby. I want everybody to have the joy from these animals that I have. The hobby grows, my business grows, right? Then I can expand and have more animals and do more things and do more of this. So you really have to reach out to all those demographics. But you don't have to pander to them. What you have to do is treat those demographics like they're into snakes when they come there and they talk to you. And the worst thing you can do is when somebody walks up to your table, you know, and we've all wanted to do it. You know, you've had a long day. Maybe you didn't do a lot of sales. And you're like, yeah, man, this wasn't the best day. And you're just kind of done. And people are walking up and they're wanting to look at something. And you're thinking they're just kicking tires. And a lot of them are. You're going to deal with a lot of people who are just kicking tires. And you think that per and, and you know, you start doing sales and you try to picture the buyers, try to pick out the serious ones, right? And, and maybe you can to an extent, but I'm going to tell you, you got to treat the non-serious ones just as good, especially kids, you know, who, who can't even buy it without their parents. Especially, I won't sell without the parents there. And when they want a snake in their hand, you got to put a snake in their hand. Let me find something cool here. And what I mean by that is it's very important I'm going to find something really neat for this, to put that animal in their hand. Why? Well, because if you don't put an animal in their hand, like this, this is a cool animal. When you can put that animal in their hand, like so, and they can interact with it, they can see it, maybe it takes away the fear that they have, you know, they can play with it, uh, just kind of get a feel for it. You know, maybe they're not a customer today. Maybe they will be. And they may not even be your customer. Maybe they come back and they buy from somebody else a month or two later. And I'm okay with that. You think, well, why are you okay with that? That means you lost a sale. But I didn't because I guarantee you there are times somebody has bought from me because somebody else put a snake in their hand. And they went back and they thought about it and they got curious. They looked up a few more things. They did a little more research. They did a little more. Then they came back and they bought a snake from somebody. It happened to be me that time. So if I can do that and they can go back and buy a snake from somebody else, then they're going to be my customer maybe one day. Or they're going to tell somebody about me. See, all those people who are simply the tire kickers that you think, that's not a snake buyer. Because that's what we do. We have that picture in our head and we go, that's a snake buyer. That's a snake buyer. That's not, that's not, that's not, that's not. Here's why I focus on. What I'm telling you is give them their justice. Give them their moment. Give them their time. Don't dismiss them. Don't dismiss them because they don't fit whatever your personal stereotypes are for a snake buyer because it'll make our hobby stronger. It'll make our business better. And together we're going to be able to grow that way. Whenever we close ranks and we treat new people like shit or we treat people like, kind of like they're not important, whether we realize it or not. And we're all going to do it because we're human. Okay, we're, gonna, we're not going to be perfect. I, I include myself in that group. I want to be up front. I'm not saying I do great and you all suck or vice versa. What I'm saying is we're all humans. We can all improve on this. Uh, but when we, when we give that person that focus, you know, they're going to make us better and vice versa. So this isn't supposed to be touchy-feely or anything like that. This is actually what I would consider good business advice, you know, Treat everybody like a customer. Make them want to come back. Make them want to be a part of this hobby. Make them want to share in it. And when they come back and they've got that first snake, whether it came from Petco or PetSmart or anywhere else, you know, another breeder or, or whatever, or maybe they got it and it wasn't in the best of situations that they got in and they just, they're asking for help. Help them. Even when you don't want to take the phone call, even when you don't want to respond to an email, even when you don't want to have that conversation, if you can, do. And the reason is, when they first get in, that hobby is welcoming, and they turn into somebody like me. What I mean by somebody like me is I don't have one snake or, or two snakes. I've got a lot. I've bought a lot of snakes from a lot of people, you know. 
And, and I go out and I tell people you know, who I really like in the hobby, who treated me good, who helped me, who did this, who did that. You guys hear me drop names all the time. You know, John Dog. That guy spent hours on the phone with me to sell a Python. And I guarantee you, he made uh, less money than his time was worth on that sale. I promise you he did. Now, John, I don't know if you watch this or if you remember that. But if you do, I promise he made less money than his time was worth on that sale. But I guarantee you, because I've told people, hey, if I don't have it, check this guy. He's made money from that. I guarantee you, the guys at TGR, whether it's you know tall grass reptiles selling snakes or TGR racks, they have made money because I trust them. I like them. I love their product. They helped me when I was first starting out. I bought lots of animals from them. They've answered lots of questions when I was new. You know, they've and I've sent them business as well. And the reason is because when some people may think I was that reptile guy, you know, or probably did because you know I'm kind of a nerd. I don't know. But they helped me out when I needed it. They answered questions when I had them, you know, even on small sales. They treated me like a customer. Not everybody did. Not everybody did, you know. There's places I'd go, and I'd be looking, and I'd ask a question, and you could tell I was a noob. They'd kind of like, you know, they'd just have a look about them. They may answer it, but it was the way people did it. And there are people still from that I know today that I would never, ever, ever buy an animal from because of the way they treated me or the way I saw them treat others. So all I'm saying is do your best to treat potential customers well. That doesn't mean you got to treat assholes well, okay? If they're an asshole, they're an asshole. But if they're a potential customer, treat them really well. Because if you treat them well, one day they're going to hopefully treat you well. And one day they're going to make contributions to the hobby, whether it's their own snakes or helping out somebody else or putting a snake in a kid's hand that lights a passion. You know, or teaching their kids not to be afraid, whatever it may be, they're going to make those contributions, you know, and they're going to do great things in the hobby. But they're only going to do great things in the hobby if somebody helps light that passion. People did for me, you know, for me it was a teacher in school that had snakes, but not everybody gets that experience. Maybe you, maybe you lighten somebody's passion. So my challenge is when you run into somebody who says, hey, you know, can I hold that snake or can I see that snake or ask a question? Include them. Include them whether you think they're a buyer or not. Include them whether they're that demographic that you're really targeting or not. Include them. Engage them. Show them that as a hobby, one, there's nothing to be afraid of. Two, we're, we're friendly people for the most part. Yeah, every hobby has some dicks, but we're mostly good people. Show them what this hobby is and what the people are that are in it. Be an ambassador for these animals and for this hobby, and you'll watch yourself be more successful because of it. Guys, that's all I got, and my cat just snuck in and I'm trying to play with my snake. So hopefully uh, that didn't come off as too much of a rant. And this is not something that uh, anything spurred. This is a conversation I've been thinking about for a while because I, I just didn't know how to really approach it, but I do think it's important. And if you've had an experience where somebody was not inclusive of you and treated you like shit, for whatever reason it may have been when you were asking the question and, and you think, you know, I, I felt like this happened because I was, you know, a uh, Hispanic and they didn't think Mexican people own snakes or Hispanic people. Not all Hispanic people are Mexicans, I understand. Or, you know, they don't think black people own snakes. Or they didn't think women own snakes, um, you know, or whatever that may be. If you felt that was the reason, let me know. I want to have that conversation because I'm curious how often that happens. I feel that it probably happens quite a bit because we all have our stereotypes. But I think that we can do better. And if you have been treated that way and you're still here, then I hope you definitely understand the importance of including everybody who walks up, right? Question girl, any questions? Um, she doesn't have any. She if you... Voice. She's reaching right now. No, if you, <laughs> if you are kind of like what Matt said and have a experience to share... Mm. I'd be curious to know how frequently that experience occurs. Is it maybe every two tables that you approach? Is it every time you go to a show? Is it maybe every couple of shows? How, I, I guess my curiosity would be, was this a one-time thing by only like maybe one table? Mm -hmm. That was just... Um, Isolated incident? Isolated incident or... Maybe somebody's bad day. You know? uh, or somebody who lives in a cave <laughs> and hasn't joined the 21st century yet. Or is this someone who has 
had this experience multiple times, almost repetitively when yes. you're approaching I would be curious. Shows. Though. So if you could just give that in the comments, that would really help us yeah. in just understanding what's really kind of going on in the reptile community. And granted, it's not that I've seen like widespread sexism or racism or anything like that in the reptile community. I don't think that's really a problem. Uh, but again, it's hard for me to say what's a problem, right? I'm a white guy. <laughs> so as a white male, I probably wouldn't really know if that was a big issue in the hobby because... It, it wouldn't be happening to me necessarily. Uh, what about you? Question: When you've gone around to shows, walk around without me, and you look at things, people treat you different as a woman. Of course. Um, really. Essentially, I don't get talked to, and I have to. If I'm standing at a table, I usually get ignored unless I specifically ask to see something, or I ask to um, maybe ask a question, even if it's people we know. Really. And. Yeah. And so, um, I mean, I don't want to say that this is an isolated thing because I know that I've definitely experienced it. Well, people or, we know, though, in their defense, they know I would be the guy buying something. Well, maybe, you know. but that's kind of not the point. The point no. is people we don't I know definitely could easily be purchasing a snake for you. Yeah, or looking for something for me. And, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I'm probably not what someone would think of as the person who's going to be going in and purchasing a snake at a show. Yeah. I mean, you have someone who is tall, fairly conservative. So, apparently, if dress. you're conservative in your dress and tall, you don't buy snakes. Let me ask this. This is a fun question because this is what we were talking about when you were out of the room for a few minutes. What it would be your stereotypical snake person? Quote, unquote. Before you met me, did you, if I told you, what would you think of when I said somebody owns snakes? What's a person that pops in your head? Um, I imagine somebody wearing those Junko jeans from the 90s okay. that might be a skater and wearing their, uh, their Vans and an oversized hoodie. Ooh, um, we have oversized hoodies. Get that one. And um, anyway, may have tats, may not. I mean, I don't think skin tone is something I ever have thought about, but I would definitely say like the baggy skater jeans from the 90s pop in my head. What about, and what about gender? Eh, I no, no. I mean, I feel like naturally so I gravitate to thinking of a guy, okay. but I mean, honestly... I'm thinking you're describing most guys dressed there. But. but I feel like the people who I hung out with in high school were the skater girls, though. So you hung out with snake people? They, none of them had snakes, <laughs> but That's but funny, because your stereotypical person that has a snake doesn't even own snakes. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. That's just what I picture. It doesn't mean that yeah. they even have snakes or don't. But, but, but that's the point, I guess. When we go I'm to the making. shows, I don't know. I've had multiple coworkers and colleagues, and they've been just as surprised to see me as I have them. So, right. And that's the point I'm making, is we all have that picture. you know. But when you're in a business, you cannot afford to block off a section of customers just because they don't fit your stereotype. And uh, like I could say, I learned that lesson in Kansas City when a lady dressed like a professional who was like middle-aged came up and, and looked at a few things. And, you know, and I, like I said, I treat like a customer because I try to be, treat everybody, you know, like like they're a potential customer, something I've always tried to do. Uh, but I'm thinking there's no way this lady's buying the snake. This ain't a snake person. You know, she's probably looking for her kid or something like that. And she, like, just laid down the money and bought one of the most expensive snakes I've ever sold. And I was surprised. And I say I learned a lesson that day. And I want to make sure that everybody is inclusive in the hobby. It just grows the hobby. It just grows the hobby. And it grows your business. Uh, it's kind of like spreading the love, right? So remember, it doesn't matter what race, religion, creed, sex, any of that. Uh, they're a potential customer. Treat them as such. And you'll grow the hobby. All right, anything else questions before we get off here? No. No. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Love each other, one of you. See you next week.